Hi, this narrated PowerPoint presents a concept map or mind map of a medical diagnosis of diabetes. The information presented here documents the thought process or critical thinking about the medical diagnosis of diabetes. If you have a patient with diabetes assigned to you, whether they are newly diagnosed or have had a diagnosis of diabetes, either type 1 or 2, insulin dependent or not, this mind map may be useful for you as a review. My name is Pat Clay. I have a Master's of Science in Nursing. I'm an RN, a certified pediatric nurse, and a certified wound ostomy nurse. The overarching concept for the diagnosis of diabetes is glucose regulation. To diagnose a person as having diabetes, the diagnostic criteria must be met. The diagnostic criteria for diabetes is a fasting blood glucose of greater than 126. The A1C measures the average blood glucose level over the last three months expressed in percent. The goal is to keep it under 7. The diagnostic criteria determine the diagnosis. The arrow goes from the criteria box to the medical diagnosis box. The goals are determined by the criteria. The arrow goes from the criteria to the goal box. What influences blood glucose? Here I added to the map four bubbles, each with a different item that influences blood glucose in a patient with a diagnosis of diabetes. The arrows illustrate interconnections between the items. Diet can influence blood glucose, but also having diabetes can influence diet, hence a two-way arrow. Diet can affect goals. Diet can affect insulin dosing, which in turn affects meeting goals. Culture can affect both diet and goals directly. Family structure and roles can affect the goals. How can having a diagnosis of diabetes cause problems? As the blood thickens with glucose, think of it as syrup, it impairs circulation in the smallest of blood vessels, affecting the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the most peripheral cells, whether in skin or organs. Impaired microcirculation can lead to visual disturbances, which can lead to a fall. Neuropathy that puts the patient at risk for falls and injury due to sensory impairment can occur. Poor wound healing and renal impairment. What else can be done to meet and maintain the goals? Thinking about what can impact the problems associated with impaired microcirculation, I recognize the concept of a medical home as a critical component. The Agency for Healthcare and Research Quality defines a primary care medical home as not simply a place, but a model of the organization of primary care that delivers the core functions of primary health care, which are comprehensive care, meeting the large majority of each patient's physical and mental health care needs, including prevention and wellness, acute care and chronic care, patient-centered that is relationship-based with an orientation towards the whole person, coordinated care across all elements of the broader health care system, including specialty care, hospitals, home health care, and community services and supports, accessible services providing around-the-clock telephone or electronic access, and quality and safety demonstrated through evidence-based medicine and clinical decision support tools. So a medical home offers follow-up, monitoring, and supplies and medications. This slide represents continued thinking about interconnections. Microcirculation problems can cause a patient to seek help. Having a medical home can affect microcirculation through effective management. Family dynamics can affect diet and can affect culture as well as be influenced by culture, hence the arrow both ways. Culture can affect diet and diet can affect microcirculation. Finally, I pulled together a care plan for my patient with diabetes that will inform nursing interventions. My interventions were about diet teaching, insulin therapy, fall prevention, wound prevention and healing, monitoring for renal impairment and ability to empty the bladder, and establishment of a medical home for supply orders. As I care for this diabetic patient or any patient, I always want to think about the worst things with a high probability that can happen. 
As I identify those worst things, I think about the nursing interventions that will monitor for and prevent those from happening. This will focus my assessments and monitoring on what is most critical. Will my patient possibly experience a hypoglycemic episode after I administer insulin? How would I know? Is my patient experiencing visual disturbances or neuropathy that might cause imbalance and contribute to a fall? Because healing is impaired, which areas on the body should I be sure to inspect on my bedridden or chair-bound patient, considering a possible pressure injury? How will I reinforce teaching about foot care? Here are some of the worst things that can happen with a high probability that I listed. A fall could happen, hypoglycemic episode after insulin administration, hyperglycemia, how would I know and how would I treat that? Wound infection, what are the signs and symptoms of a wound infection? Urosepsis from urine retention. Urosepsis can happen very, very quickly, especially in immune compromised patients. And ur urine retention in a diabetic is a possibility because of the neuropathy. Remember, a concept map is a visual representation of a thought process. That's why it can also be called a mind map. It is reflective of how a nurse thinks. A medical diagnosis of diabetes can be thought of as the concept of glucose regulation because it has many cause and effect relationships. The purpose of a mind map is to develop a care plan for the patient that prioritizes interventions and addresses potential problems. Find more narrated PowerPoints on YouTube channel, Prof. Clay, A Plus Clinicals. Email questions and comments to profclay2020 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.